Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is peak summertime at the moment. Let me just best way to clear the windows at the side is to get rid of the windows at the side. There's a van right out behind me because he's come slung himself around the left hand corner and found me pulling it out of my drive. So how are you? All right? I'm learning. I'm improving these videos gradually you now. You'll notice that there's, there's very little or no steering wheel in them now. And that's because I'm putting the, cam the phone over to the left and the cropping the uh, steering wheel out. Because the last thing you want is the view of the steering wheel going up and down, isn't it? In shots. And also I've put my, uh, the inset picture of me, I've shrunk it down. Because again, it's like, you know, it doesn't change. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm still me. It's the view out of the front that changes. And today's a lovely view. It's been Scorchio today, up to 28 in the southeast. You wouldn't believe it, would you? All those days when we came to work and it was pissing down with rain. This is a funny bend, this. You have to go left and then right. stay in because there's anything coming the other way so it's Monday morning and I'm on my way to work so what's on my mind this morning well I had a chap come in I forget if it was Thursday or Friday last week and he got he got really terrible teeth I mean he got basically got stumps at the front and they were all they were very dark brown and uh, he said he wanted to uh, sort out his two front teeth didn't like the appearance of his two front teeth well I mean, we're quite honestly it's all his teeth that are the problem it's not just his two front teeth but I mean you know you have to start from where the patients are and then and then start from where you are and then try and see if there's anything that you can do that will solve the problem that they feel that they've got so let's talk a bit about um, say uh, because you know a lot of dentists do private conversions and a lot of dentists want to be private dentists and uh, I'm not talking about you know sort of dentists who want to do uh, smile line or uh, Invisalign or veneers you know do do wall to wall veneers or and stuff like that or whitening specialist whitening clinics you know the sort of the uh, real specialist cosmetic uh, private stuff I'm just talking about your day-to-day -day normal patient would prefer to have it done privately because they want a bit more time uh, better quality materials and labs and, and a much better more personalized sort of service so So this chap comes in and he's like, uh, he's a very lovely chap, you know, very sort of quite spoken. In his probably late 60s, early 60s. And um, so immediately I'm starting to think of, so this is, this is quite an advanced case. This is quite a big, not a big case. I mean, we have done, the thing about dentistry is that, you know, a big case is only a load of small cases. You know, there's things that you've done, you, you know how to do back to front. It's just a case of doing them all together and coordinating it all. So, I'm thinking, okay, well, these teeth are short. Are we going to be able to get crowns on them? Chances are probably no. They're too short. And in thinking that, I'm thinking like, you know, I don't want him to come back even in three years, four years, five years and say his crowns are coming off. And I certainly don't want him to come back after three, four, five months and say these crowns are coming off. And um, <coughs> obviously that 
that can happen. And the, what, the reason why it happens is you tend to rely on the glue. You tend to think, oh, that, that tooth is too short, but don't worry. The modern adhesives and glues, they'll, you know, it's a bit like the old uh, adverts for um, the wood glues. who said that the, the glue is stronger than the wood itself. In other words, if you glue two bits of wood together and then pull them apart again, they don't break down the glue line, they break again somewhere else in the wood line. So, obviously the first thing you do is x-rays. So it shows that these teeth, not only are they sort of brown and black, but they've also got measles and distals in them and stuff like that. So, so really the only thing that's worth keeping on these teeth are the roots. Now that then raises the next question, which is like probably the most expensive and technically complicated thing we do is uh, a, a post-supported ground after a root filling. Now, on the plus side, these are all at the front, so the root fillings are not going to be that tricky. But on the minus side, uh, he's not going to be one to be left with no teeth. Uh, so all the time you're thinking planning okay how are we going to do this how are we going to do this so ideally what you'd want to do is do the root fillings and then when you're happy that they settle down and they're going to be okay then go in and do all the the crown preps and everything but he's still saying he only wants his front teeth done two two teeth done so, and then, of course, when you look at his teeth, you'll find that he's got probably two back teeth that meet, nothing more than that. So you've got additional problems, haven't you? You've got lack of posterior support. Obviously, he's been doing all his chewing on his front teeth. You've got um, erosion and probably attrition as, as problems. He's not wearing dentures. Is he going to want to wear dentures? Probably not. He's going to want a new improved set of teeth that's capable of doing what his teeth are doing, or what he thinks that they're doing, well, but in fact they're not doing, uh, which is to cope with his bite and just carry on chewing on his front teeth, but make him look a lot better. So I said to him, and it's important that you say this right at the beginning, you know, you're, this is, although you're saying that you just want a couple of new white front teeth, what you've got there is technically quite complex. And it's quite an advanced restorative case. It's not just a case of, yeah, I'll get a couple of crowns done for you, no problem at all. So then the next thing we do is uh, vitality testing. So I've got an electronic pulp tester, which I recommend to everybody. Um, and that shows us that of the four front teeth, let's say the six front teeth, the canines are vital, the upper left two is already a portland bonded crown, uh, so we can't test it, and uh, the um, upper right lateral and the two centrals are non-vital. So, so then you've got, you've got non-vital teeth, but on the x-ray, no signs of any periapical bone loss. So there's two possibilities, aren't there? One is that the teeth are dead, but there's been no infection because it's a closed system. Or the other one is that the uh, teeth are so abused uh, over so many years that the nerves have shrunk and therefore they're not responding at all to any sort of external stimulus. Come on then, in your MG with the exhaust, let's in. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so, and you can't really know which is which, but really, to be honest with you, it, it all leads back, all roads lead to Rome which is that you're probably looking at root treating these, at least the, the three front incisors. 
you then have to decide whether you're going to what you're going to do with the crown on the top left too. So <clears throat> that is like you would expect the wrong shape, the wrong color, and in the wrong position. Now you might say, well, you know, what he's going to get is so substantially better than what he's got that really he shouldn't complain. And and that always reminds me of a. Uh, a, a tape, an EMS tape, a, um, a tape on um, emergencies in the dental surgery that was narrated by a guy who worked as a A&E consultant at University College Hospital where I trained. <clears throat> and uh, what was his name? Was it uh, Baderman? Howard Baderman? Can't remember. Anyway, uh, he was talking about doing CPR on patients and he said that, uh, you know, if you're doing CPR and you're doing it, uh, how can I put it, enthusiastically, then the patient may break a rib. But he said that you're, you'd have to be unlucky if you've just rescued somebody from the jaws of death and brought them back to life and saved their life and they, they, they then complain that you've broken one of their ribs doing it. But of course the patient is never, you know, they're not going to accept that uh, the thing is a vast improvement and, and delivers what you promised. They're always going to look and say, well, is it perfect? You know, is it as good as it could have been? And what they're doing is they're ruining their decision not to have the fourth crown. And it's not your fault they decided not to have the fourth crown and you've done your best to incorporate the fourth crown into the into the work I mean for example we had a lady who came in with one tooth right lower left three and uh, you can imagine it sticking right out she's sticking right out like this <laughs> and so but it was it was quite firm and there's all sorts of things you could do with that. I mean, I could root treat it, chop it off, put a ball attachment on it, put a ball attachment in the denture. The patients in Thanet, Ramsgate, Margate are not into that. You know, they're not they're not dentally educated or affluent enough for for me to use a load of precision attachments. They're all they're very much like the patients that used to be around when I. Uh, when I qualified in 1981-82 and they're just into plastic dentures the occasional metal denture etc 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 Very strange. I suppose people think they can undertake. Yeah, so, you know, so you're going to get this situation where I'm going to say to her, like, oh, we're good if we could keep this tooth because it'll be retentive, help, it'll help with the stability and retention of the lower denture. And she's like, well, okay, but then, but then it's going to be an, it's a nightmare to try and incorporate this over erupted lower left three. When I say over erupted, I mean it probably isn't over erupted. And if the other thirty-one teeth were still present, it would probably be in the right position. But you know, uh, uh, the way her full 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 barge was worn, then it's just ended up being out of place. So again, you're doing the right thing, but what you're doing is you're leaving yourself open to, you know, her saying, yeah, it's not, I like them, but I don't like this tooth. It just doesn't, doesn't fit in with the others. So let's come to the conclusion of this. We've taken all these factors into account. I said to him, so, so now I'm thinking to myself, okay, look, I'm gonna pitch for this. 
but I'm going to pitch at a fairly high level knowing that he might then turn around and say well that's more than I budgeted for etc etc or that's not really what I want or not what I asked for so I said to him that to get any sort of reasonable result here we're going to have to uh, crown more than the front two in fact I would go with the front six three to three you'll, you'll get a bit of a like a Wallace and Gromit type smile but anything less than six is going to look silly and the front two is going to leave you with a classic like Bugs Bunny type appearance that's going to look very strange so he thought about it for a bit and he said yeah that's all right okay I told him the cost I mean we're talking about I don't know six grand or something six or seven grand which I mean is ridiculously cheap but it's not such a difficult job However, we are going to treat it as a proper job, you know what I mean? We're going to take uh, primary impressions, articulate the casts. Uh, he's going to get uh, custom temporaries, etc, etc. But he said something to me which was uh, quite telling, which was he said, oh, see, my mother's just passed away and so she's left me the funds to be able to finance this and um, as you see all this building as we drive past every day people say well you're going to get a lot of new patients from this and I said well I don't think so because these guys will all have moved into these houses because they've um, their family's getting bigger they've had one child now they've got two they're all shared ownership so they can't afford to pay the mortgage on the whole thing so they're paying mortgage and rent they're not really going to be running around looking for a private dentist are they our market is really people whose parents have just died who've left them a wash of cash who've got terrible teeth and who decide that they want to get it sorted out and then sure enough in comes someone who says that explicitly so that sort of uh, oh, God. these people what are they up to can't they just leave us alone So anyway, I said to him that we can get you in Tuesday morning because I don't mind coming in and working an extra morning or something for a job that like that. I think what I was going to do is try to do it all in one go, but I think what I'll do is I'll do the root fillings first and then um, get him back and, you know, and then I can take primary impressions and uh, do the articulation and stuff like that. You're balancing his desire to get it all done straight away because once patients decide that they're going to get it all done straight away, then uh, they want it done like yesterday, you know, preferably yesterday morning because yesterday afternoon would be too late. So he was supposed to pay for that, I think, Friday five o'clock, and as far as I know, no money's come in. So I don't. I think his Tuesday appointment is going to be cancelled now. And it's anybody's guess why that is. I don't know whether he's just too polite to say no, or he decided when he went home that he wasn't, he didn't want to do it, or whatever, whatever. So we'll have to ring him up. There was one funny thing where, when, when I took his phone call originally, um, and booked him in, and I said to him, like, we'll send all this through by email. And he said, well, he said, you know, I have a bit of trouble with email. He says, um, I'm, you know, I'm a bit old, I'm a, like I'm an old git. He said, I don't really have much luck with um, computers. And I wrote that down. Patient said he's an old git with computers, etc. So there's useful information from us to make, you know, to ask him whether he wants his quote printed out, etc. But when he came in, he said, no, 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 you can email me everything, that's fine, you know, I'm, I'm brilliant with email. And I thought, that's a bit odd, you know. <laughs> You've got to look out for these tiny, tiny little things, because I said to him, oh, because when we spoke last time, you told me you were an old git and you didn't have much luck with computers. And he said, no, no, that wasn't me, that wasn't me. And I'm, I'm sitting there looking at the notes, that, you know, with literally direct quote. And you should always do this, direct quote, people, if you can. Put it in speech marks, and then you know that's exactly what they said. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, fine, okay. But I think, um, you know, 
I mean, he may have taken offence to me calling him an old gay. <laughs> but he may have forgotten that he called himself an old git, in which case he may have memory problems. Do you know what I mean? You're constantly tussling with all these these factors. So it may be that we'll ring him up today and say, can we take payment over the phone? And it'll all go, it'll go swimmingly. Or it may be that he'll, he'll say, well, when I got home, I'll, I'll change my mind. Or we may not be able to get in touch with him and may have to cancel his appointment. And that, that, that may piss him off. Because he might say, well, I didn't realise I had to pay in advance. Um, and I thought I could pay when I came in, uh, which for £6,000 is a bit optimistic. And the other thing is that, you know, we do take the money off people up front. And the last guy who uh, worked here, Colin Logan, he used to do that. And the reason why he did that was because he, he would say, look, there's no point doing like quite a complicated treatment plan involving two phases, root treatments and then post crowns. If you do the root treatments and then the patient turns around and says, look, I thought I was going to have the money to to finish the treatment off. Uh, <clears throat> but now, now I find that my car's broken down and I don't have it. <coughs> In which case, um, where, where does that leave you, you know, as the dentist with a half finished course of treatment? So uh, he always said, get the money, get the money up front. He said, well, they can afford it. And then it's safer in your bank account than it is in theirs, to be honest. Anyway, I'll, um, I might let you know um, how it turns out in my next video. But just that's just one simple case of a bloke coming in saying he doesn't like his teeth, he wants a couple of front crowns, and then all, all the palaver that we've had to go through to try and get this organised for him. Um, and, uh, and he may not even come in. We may, all that work may have been completely in vain, because we may be that he's, he's just mucking us about, you know? All right, lovely. Nice to talk to you. See you soon. Bye.